The Cougars are back. Hand off Squally. Squally runs it right, gets to the five. He's got the pylon. He's got the touchdown. Oh, Canada! We're two hours away from the kickoff of BYU football. Timing pattern. End zone. It is caught by Bushman. Back. Left pylon. Touchdown, Cougars. This is Cougar Pregame Live. Cougar Pregame Live is proudly supported by Ken Garf, Honda, Nissan, and Volkswagen in Orem. Also by Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 25 years. To get you ready for today's battle on the gridiron, let's join the host of Cougar Pregame Live, Jason Shepard. Good afternoon, BYU football fans. Welcome into Cougar Pregame Live. This afternoon, BYU faces Western Michigan in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl in Boise, Idaho. As always, I am joined by the great, the fantastic (laughs) Mark Lyons and Mark, the Cougars haven't played since losing to Utah on November 24th. That was certainly tough, but Mark, BYU is back in the postseason, which was one of their goals heading into this year. Exactly right. They're in the bowl. Uh, I think that is a big deal. You know, it was was close, but uh, no matter what, they're in a bowl. And I do think that's an important thing that uh, helps the program immensely to have that opportunity to be able to uh, go and play in a bowl game. And, uh, you know, uh, Boise, Idaho, it, it doesn't matter the location at this point. It's game day. It's time to play the game. And it doesn't matter where you are. That's not going to have anything to do with what goes on in this game. Without question, this was a goal of this team to get back to a bowl game. Now it's their goal to win the game. And there really is quite a bit on the line for BYU today. We will get to that as we get to game headlines as the Cougars face the other Broncos. These are your BYU football headlines. Headline number one. As we just mentioned, BYU back in a bowl game after a one-year hiatus. And, Mark, this game will determine whether or not BYU has a record above 500 by one game or one game below 500. There's a lot to play for today. I agree. I think that's the truth. First of all, let's go back to that, uh, the other Broncos. I thought that was so interesting. I'm, not everybody knows that uh, I think that the Western Michigan uh, mascot is the Broncos <laughs> and the same as Boise State Broncos. And it's kind of a bother to me to see that horse head out in the middle of the stadium field. <laughs> it's kind of like it's there for the Western Michigan. But uh, this is an important thing. You, you have to play to win every game. I just think that... Uh, it's really an important thing that every time you go out to step on the field, you're matching your skills against somebody else, and you should have a desire to win the football game. And you have to keep that desire all the way through. And I, I think that that uh, is something really valuable no matter where you are, whether it's a bowl game or what. This is an, a setup as an, a, a contest that you want to win. I think that's valuable that every player have that in his mind. Then secondly, uh, to have a winning record certainly is a success over being a a losing record. And so you have that satisfaction. And I think it helps a lot in your attitude in preparation for spring ball. Well, and that's a perfect lead-in to headline number two. (laughs) The benefits of the bowl preparation could have lasting effects into the offseason. You mentioned what it could do heading into the offseason, getting ready for spring ball. Look, you get 15 extra practices. And Kalani has spoken a lot about how much he thinks that can benefit this team specifically, not only because any team can benefit for 15 extra practices, but with so many young players, so many freshmen playing significant roles for this team, having extra practices, having extra game reps for those that will be returning this year, that is a major positive. Absolutely. And so uh, you get that opportunity to put together uh, somewhat the nucleus of this year's team, and then also you get to blend in what you think the future is going to be. So you get a a chance to kind of prepare some of those younger players. Um, I think that there's a lot. I don't know if BYU is going to use this at all, but I know that other schools are, that in your bowl game you do get a chance to play a lot of those freshmen that haven't played a lot because no longer does that take away their red shirt if they're played under four games. So uh, I, I think that's a big plus to have those players practice for the bowl preparation with the attitude that some of those young players get a chance to play 
than they might not have played so far this year. Well, and you never want a single one person out on an, on an entire roster. And, and I mean this in a positive way, but this gives you more experience for Zach Wilson. And, boy, in a, in a short period of time, we have ski- seen the skill set of this young man in being able to have more practices, more game reps, and have him being the guy going into the offseason, that is a win-win. Yeah. So I agree that uh, the bowl, even though it's uh, I just sold it so much that it's a game that you have to go out and win, it's almost like a one-game season. Right. And so right now, Zach Wilson is the guy that's leading the show to get ready for that one-game season. And as he goes through those 15 practices, he goes through them as the man. And uh, it's his first opportunity to be that way. And, again, that's a great preparation for spring. And uh, one major storyline that will be uh, woven to into all parts of today's broadcast brings us to headline number three. <laughs> Mark Lyons, our friend, our broadcasting partner, broadcasting his final game today after 38 years behind the mic. And I, I know we, we had both you and Greg on BYU Sports Nation just a little over an hour ago. We were talking about this, and everybody's asking, uh, asking you how you feel. Yeah. Has, now, now that the broadcast has, has officially started, uh, get, get, <laughs> do you have the, uh, the, uh, the nervous stomach or anything like that on your final broadcast? <laughs> Well, always, yeah. Every broadcast, yeah. I'm uh, uh, kind of prepped for that. Uh, it, it is, uh, you know, it's pretty cool that you get this kind of pregame feeling that very <laughs> different than as a coach and very different from being a player. But uh, you do get this pregame feeling, and it is a little bit of anxiousness that I uh, have the idea that this is the last one that's going to happen. Well, you know, we're talking about all these things that are big for BYU and and ending the season on a high note and getting one game above 500 for the season and all those things. We need to send Mark Lyons out with a victory. That's what it boils down to, right, Mark? (laughs) It's all about me. Uh, (laughs) I, uh, yeah, I think Kalani's down there pitching it right now. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's the that is going to be the pregame half and halftime speech. Let's win this one for uh, for Mark. The we will gipper. certainly we will certainly have more on that coming up in a little bit. Uh, coming up next though, or coming up a little bit later on in the show, we will hear from Kalani Satake and Cougar Cuts. But next, we will get to know the foe as we talk with the voice of the Western Michigan Broncos, Robin Hook. This is Cougar pregame live on the New Skin BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Pregame Live. Jason Shepard in Provo. Mark Lyons at Albertson Stadium in Boise, Idaho. We're getting you ready for the BYU Cougars and the Western Michigan Broncos. It is the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, and it's time to get to know the foe. We're joined by Robin Hook, who wears a couple of different hats for the Broncos. He's the assistant athletic director. He's also the voice of Western Michigan. Robin, thanks for taking a few minutes. We appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. Looking forward to today and uh, playing a, an opponent like BYU. Great opportunity for Western Michigan and Bronco fans. Yeah, I, I'm curious. I want to start out with just talking about these two quarterbacks. Both teams are starting true freshman quarterbacks. Caleb Ellaby with making his fifth start after uh, Wasink went down with a broken collarbone. How has he handled things since taking over the reins? Yeah, actually, uh, John suffered uh, an ankle injury in the Toledo game. He broke his collarbone a year ago, recovered from that, and was off to a tremendous start. Had the Broncos on a six-game winning streak going into the Toledo game. And uh, on the third play of the game, he uh, uh, injured a tendon in his foot and has been uh, sidelined after surgery. So Caleb Allaby, a true freshman from the St. Louis area, took his first snap in one of the biggest games against a Mac West rival Toledo. And, you know, he actually did pretty well in that game, but the defense struggled a bit. And uh, the Broncos fell in that game, then lost the next two, and so had a three-game losing streak going into the final game against Northern Illinois, who would become the eventual Mid-American Conference champ, and the Broncos defeated Northern Illinois in Kalamazoo. Caleb had a splendid game, and that was a huge win for Western Michigan. Had they not won, they would probably not be in a bowl game. Well, I was very impressed uh 
BYU played Northern Illinois, and their defense was just outstanding. Uh, held BYU to two field goals. So uh, I was really impressed in watching that video at how well uh, Western Michigan did against them. Uh, I'm curious to know, though, I'm of the belief that the making the quarterback change wasn't the reason for those three losses. It was not. It was uh, defensive uh, breakdowns, uh, gave up huge points. Uh, In the Ohio game the following week, turnovers, six turnovers, turnovers inside the 10-yard line, fumbled kick returns and stuff like that. It kind of imploded in those two games. And then I went on the road to play Ball State and had the football 42 minutes to 18 (laughs) for Ball State, yet they gave up uh, enough points that the Cardinals were able to win. Western Michigan went for two on the – after oh, scoring yeah. very late in the game, and the two-point play did not uh, work. It was not successful, so they ended up losing that game, which created a real a must-win situation against Northern Illinois. And after the Ball State game, Coach Lester made a very difficult decision in uh, letting his defensive coordinator go. And uh, so Lou Esposito, who was the co-defensive coordinator but wasn't calling the defense, stepped in. And uh, the players played with such great enthusiasm Mm -hmm. for Lou in that Northern Illinois game, really held them to two touchdowns. The other touchdown was a Sutton Smith 80-yard fumble return for a touchdown. And thank goodness he's going to the National Football League so they don't have to play (laughs) him anymore. (laughs) Robin, one of the the themes that keeps you know bringing itself back up when I talk with opposing broadcasters or opposing head coaches of teams that BYU plays, they always bring up the size of this Cougar team on both sides of the line. How do you think the Broncos match up on both sides in terms of size? Well, the Broncos are, I think you'll notice when they hit the field, not a big team, particularly on defense. Offensive line's pretty stout, but on defense, smaller quicker guys and so they have their hands full against a big offensive line for BYU and then the offensive line has played against some stout defenses like Northern Illinois so I think uh, they're a bit used to that but not used to the length that BYU has on defense and certainly a 340 pound nose tackle who's going to fill up the TV screen today (laughs) no doubt in Tonga he's a good one yeah He's a good one. So uh, now that's the other side of the ball. I'm so impressed with the offense, and I know Jason's going to ask you about those two running backs. Well, maybe I'm going to ask about them. You know, they're both kind of small, but, boy, they're strong-legged and they're quick. It's hard to tackle. Yeah, they are. Jamari Bogan is a little guy uh, with a lot of punch, a lot of power in his lower body. He's second all-time in rushing touchdowns for Western Michigan as uh, he trails only Jarvion Franklin, who – was a teammate with Jamari for uh, four years at Western Michigan. Uh, Jamari is the guy who gets the short yardage. He's the guy they go to when they need a yard. Fifteen touchdowns. Fifteen touchdowns. And so uh, Levante Bellamy runs between the 20s, and then (laughs) when they get in the red zone, normally you're going to see Jamari come in there and try and uh, run inside zone plays, which is his play. That's his play, and he normally scores on it. He gets behind those big linemen at 5'7", and that's pretty generous at 5'7", <laughs> uh, and somehow finds little creases to get in the end zone. Le- uh, Levante Bellamy led the Mid-American Conference in rushing at just under 1,200 yards, and he can really fly. He's the fastest of the Broncos at 4'3", and uh, he uses that speed, and uh, they'll try and get him outside today. You know, it's it's interesting because f- rightfully so, Bellamy and Bogans get the the bulk of the attention because they're so impressive running the ball. And what a luxury it is to have for any quarterback, let alone a true freshman quarterback. But what about the other skill positions? What about the other talent on offense around those guys? I have a really talented freshman in uh, Jaden Reed. He's known as Bird to his teammates. He's been known as Bird ever since he was born, I guess. It's always been his nickname. Nobody knows his name is Jaden Reed. They just call him Bird. And uh, he plays out in the slot and scored eight touchdowns as a true freshman. He'll also return punts and uh, probably kickoffs today. He's a really splendid football player and uh, was all-conference as a true freshman at both wide receiver and punt returner. So he is one of the threats out there. And then D. Eskridge, Plays out on the edge, and he's a deep threat with his speed. He's the second fastest on the team behind Bellamy. Those two guys like to line up and race uh, (laughs) and uh, see who's the (laughs) fastest. But uh, D can really fly out on the edge 
And then the Broncos use their tight ends quite a bit, particularly Gio Ricci, who was a converted wide receiver. They put some weight on him and wanted a threat to get down the field from the tight end position. And he's the guy they like to go to in third down situations. He has uh, caught over 30 passes this year, and most of those are in critical third down, even fourth down situations where he's been able to find a crease underneath the secondary and come up with a big grab. So he's the other guy out uh, in the uh, uh, pass patterns that the Broncos like to go to. Would you say that uh, Western Michigan is more of a second-half team than a first-half team? I notice they get behind a lot at the start of games, but only give up 55 points in the fourth quarter where a lot of there's a lot of points going on the rest of the game, and then they're scoring over, uh, what, uh, 100 and 234 points in the second half. Great observation, and there's two reasons for that. Uh, they make great adjustments at halftime. This is a very talented coaching staff. Tim Luster knows his X's and O's, man. He is really good at that. And uh, the other thing is their offense seems to get rolling in the second half, and they keep the football away from the other team. Mm-hmm. So Western Michigan, one of the top time of possession teams in the country, uh, witnessed that 42-minute time of possession <laughs> against Ball State. State. They uh, have been able to sustain long drives. Now, can they do it? against a stout defense like uh, the Cougars have today. We're going to find out. Mm-hmm. Staying on those, uh, those, that same line in terms of the defense for Western Michigan, is, you know, obviously giving up some points. There has been some changes there in terms of the defensive coordinator. H- how would you describe this defense in general, maybe from the start of the season to where they are now heading into this bowl game? Well, it's a speed-based defense. As I said earlier, it's not a big defense. And uh, they're a little thin at the cornerback spot. They had to move a wide receiver, Anton Curtis, to defense uh, a week into camp. And uh, he's done very, very well. Uh, Then you have uh, Stephen Claiborne, who's really a true safety, who converted to corner because it was needed. And uh, they had a little more depth at the safety spot, and he was able to do that. So... Secondary has been a little bit of an issue. They're a little thin back there. Hopefully they can get through this game. And they've recruited a lot of defensive backs to join the team here in the spring and in the summer camp as well. But uh, the linebackers are real active. Drake Spears was an uh, all-conference player. And uh, then you've got uh, Alex Grace. Those two guys led the team in tackles. Yeah. They're undersized linebackers that just run around and make plays. And a lot of tackles for losses from yep. all of those guys up yep. front. Yeah. You've got uh, Ali Fayad, who's an outstanding pass rusher on the edge. You've got uh, uh, some other guys in there that can get to the quarterback. A big plus for the team has been the uh, play of Ralph Holly. He's really come on inside at one of the defensive tackle spots, a tr- Detroit area kid, outstanding football player, just a sophomore. He's got a lot of good football left. And the guy that really runs the show over there is Justin Tranquil. His brother Drew Tranquil plays for Notre Dame, outstanding football family, and uh, Justin was uh, – Injured last year in the Michigan State game, tore an ACL, his second ACL injury, and he missed up virtually the entire season. But he's played all 12 games this season, and he kind of gets everybody lined up right on defense, a valuable player in the secondary for the Broncos. Kind of unique in that all of the specialists are freshmen. Yeah. We went from the oldest special teams to the <laughs> youngest special teams. We had a 31-year-old place kicker, punter, and Holder last year, and Derek Mitchell, who played 10 years of minor league baseball. Oh. And uh, he got married and uh, decided not to play his final year of eligibility, and so it was turned over to a group of freshmen, freshman place kicker, freshman punter, freshman long snapper, <laughs> and a freshman return Returner, guy. Yeah. And so uh, the Broncos had a fabulous return man, and Darius Phillips is now with the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, fifth-round pick by Cincinnati, and he was just outstanding, the all-time leader in returns in the Mid-American Conference. He was phenomenal and returned a bunch for touchdowns, both uh, punting and uh, kick returns and and uh, interception returns. It seemed like every time he touched the football, everybody thought he was taking it to the house. Well, he's not here anymore, yeah. so they had to turn it over to some young guys, and they've been learning on the job. It's uh, it's been a it's been a sore spot, particularly earlier in the season. It's improved quite a bit of late. Gavin Petty, a, a local kid from West Michigan, a walk-on, has really become a pretty 
pretty dependable guy kicking field goals and extra points. So uh, hopefully he'll be able to continue that today. Talking with Robin Hook, he's the voice of the Western Michigan Broncos. I think uh, I probably speak for all of us when I say, man, it's been, it's been, it's nice that we're actually preparing for a football game after a couple of weeks off. You can never have too much college football, and I think uh, we're all expecting a good one today. Robin, thank you so much for your time, and have a good call today. My pleasure. I look forward to it. Thanks again. There we go. My one-on-one -on -one with James Empey is coming up a little bit later on in Shep Talk, but next, it's Cougar Cuts. You're listening to Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Jason Shepard and Mark Lyons for more Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. I'm in our BYU Radio studios in Provo, Utah. Mark is at Albertson Stadium, site of today's famous Idaho Potato Bowl, BYU and Western Michigan. And it's time for Cougar Cuts. And actually, Mark, if, if, if you don't mind, do, do you mind if I mix things up a little bit right here? No, okay, no, not at all. All right, you, you didn't know this was happening here, by the way. Oh, oh with, with today being your final broadcast, I wanted to let you know just how much you mean to so many people. So, Mark, this is for you. Hey, Mark, how you doing? This is Kalani Satake, if you needed more clarification. But I uh, just want to say thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, you have a wonderful career. It's been uh, an honor to be your friend, and um, I know you've been the ultimate professional in this in this uh in working with the radio and working with byu sports and specifically with football we appreciate you and love you and you're always you can always come suit up for us if you have any eligibility remaining thank you appreciate you love you mark this is your friend nate mickle you and me have been through a lot together my friend that wild one in tulsa oklahoma seven games in vegas i almost died from the flu in laramie we called four games together in san diego and won them all that game in Jerry's world was unforgettable. I could keep going, of course, Mark. We called over 100 games together in 30 states. But to think, that's not even a quarter of the games you called. Congrats on the unbeatable career, Mark. You won. I love you, Mark. And to think, man, you got in free. Hi, Mark. This is Ralph Sokolowski. First, a few stats. When Mark finished his career at BYU, he was second in career passing yards, pass completions, and passing touchdowns. As far as I'm concerned, you will always be number one as the best play-by-play -play analyst for BYU football, and I have appreciated the last 37 years that I've been able to spend some time with you in the booth. All the best to you, I wish you well, and I will certainly miss you. Hi Mark, Tom Olmo. On behalf of the BYU Athletic family, I want to sincerely thank you for your dedicated service to BYU football for the past four decades. I've loved how you've covered the Cougars and given us so much support through thick and thin. All my best to you, my friend. Hey, Mark, it's Mitchell Jurgens. I wanted to congratulate you on an amazing career with BYU. From your playing days to your broadcasting ways, you've been an inspiration to so many people, including me. I've loved getting to work alongside you this season and appreciate the memories we've shared together. I'll miss, as well as all of BYU Nation, your wit, humor, character, and analysis you brought to the radio. I wish you the best moving forward. Congrats again on an amazing and legendary BYU career. Hey, Mark, it's your old buddy, Bill Riley. I just want to say congratulations on a great career. You have been absolutely wonderful as the color analyst and ambassador for BYU football all these years. Many, many, many years ago when I came to the state of Utah and was working with you, it was an honor and a privilege, and you taught me so much about football and football in this state. You've had a great run. I want to thank you, even though I switched from the blue to the red, for your friendship and all over the years. Congratulations on a great run, and I hope to see you very, very soon. Thanks for everything, Mark. Hey, Mark, this is Chad Lewis. Thank you so much for promoting BYU football all these years. You're incredible. The thing I like most about you is you sent your high school football player, Larry Harmer, right here. And he talked me into walking onto this football program. It changed my life. I love you and think you're an incredible man. Thank you so much. Mark, after this many years together, I'm pretty sure you know who this is. There will never be enough time or enough words to convey to you how much you have meant to me and my on-air career. Not to mention how much you mean to all of your fans in Cougar Nation. You have been an anchor for me in my life and for generations of listeners who've enjoyed BYU football accompanied by the sound of your voice. You are, of course, a great broadcaster. But more importantly, you are an incredible person and a loving husband, father, and grandfather. It has been my honor to share the airwaves with you for almost two decades as your broadcast 
podcast partner, but an even greater privilege to be your friend as you are mine. On the occasion of your final radio broadcast, I say, Mark, my man, thank you for making every game day a great day for a football game. Mark, and uh, I, I get the pleasure of being able to say my thanks to you live to echo what so many others have said. I cannot say enough good things about you, not just as a broadcaster, but as a person. You are kind, you are funny, and as genuine as they come, it has been a privilege to be able to work with you for so many years, and even more importantly, to be able to call you my friend. Feel free at any time to text me if you're ever looking for new flavors of chips, anything like that, you can always contact me, and I hope that, uh, that I can contact you. Mark, congratulations on a great career. We will all miss you. Well, time for a break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you didn't know uh, that was coming, did you, Mark? N- no, I didn't know that was coming. Uh, uh, Kalani saying, if I had any eligibility left, oh, I still have that dream that I have one year left and I go down to play and I can't make the team. <laughs> just, it becomes a nightmare. It was, first of all, it was the greatest dream ever, and then it was a nightmare. Uh, wow. Uh, thank you so much for all of that. Uh, it was overwhelming. I'm, uh, I am at a loss for words. Uh, I, uh, it's just been great. I just can't express how great it's been. And so I appreciate all those kind words. That was, that was awesome. I will, uh, I will send you a copy of that just so that you have that, just so you know. Thank you. Coming up next, I go one-on-one with freshman center James Empey in Shep Talk. More Cougar pregame live coming up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to Cougar pregame live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to your host, Jason Shepard. Welcome back into Cougar pregame live. Final game of the season for BYU. It is the bowl game in Boise, Idaho. Jason Shepard in Provo. Mark Lyons in Boise. And this week's Shep Talk is with redshirt freshman offensive lineman, who, by the way, has played a fantastic season, James Impey. Impey has played and started in all 12 games at center for the BYU Cougars this year. Here's Shep Talk with James Impey. So take me through what it's been like since you guys found out what boy you were going to. You finally had an opponent to start planning for. What have the last couple of days, week and a half been like for you guys? Oh, man, we, we, we've just been really excited. Uh, being bowl eligible is, is something you don't take for granted, and we're just super excited to play in the, the Potato Bowl. And, I mean, when we heard we were playing Western Michigan, we were pumped because they're, they're a really good opponent, and they've had a great season thus far and a really good defense. So we're just excited for the challenge and excited to go up there and have some fun. Coach Satake was just talking about, and it usually seems to be the case for every game, but the team that's more physical is probably going to be the team that comes out on the end. That's what you guys pride yourselves on being. I've got to imagine you look forward to a matchup like that. Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm, especially as O lineman and, and as an offense um, like us, you want to be physical and the, phys- the most physical team wins. And um, you can see throughout this year, the games that we've been really physical, we've been uh, just fine offensively. So uh, we'll just need to keep working that this week and going up to the bowl game just being as physical as we can now that you have 12 games to look back on how would you i don't want to say grade but how would you evaluate the play of the offensive line from the start of the year to heading into the bowl game oh man um i feel like this whole year we've learned a whole bunch um and there's ups and downs just like there is on any team and um the key to that is just being able to to learn from it move on and get better and um, we got a few vets on the team, but a bunch of young guys, so um, it's been a learning experience for everybody, and everybody's contributed, and everybody's played well, and we just get another chance to play. I have to imagine, with you obviously, one of the young guys on the offensive line, but as you said, a lot of other young guys too, I would think that would be something you would look forward to, to be able to kind of grow and maybe go through some of those peaks and valleys together. I would think that would only make you guys stronger as you guys continue your careers here. Yeah, one of the uh, an important aspect in O line play is guys that can be able to work with each other and and have a little bit of a rhythm um, and be on the same page just naturally, and that comes with with time. So I think you're right. As the more time you spend with as a group, um, the better you are and the smoother the games go. So how do you think uh, James Empey has done this year? 
Oh man, I, ups and downs and <laughs> and everything. But I've just I've had so much fun this year, and it's been so nice to just to play with the these guys and this team. And you know we've really come together, and I just I'm proud to be on the team and happy that I get a chance to play. This may sound like somewhat of a dumb question because the answer is obvious. It's a winning record versus a losing record. But what would it mean to you guys to be able to win this bowl game and have a winning record, especially after last season? It would be awesome. I mean, you, you never step on the field and want to lose, you know. So we want to get out there and, and step on the field and go out and get a win. And it just means a lot for our program. We get um, a nice jump start for next year. Uh, but more importantly, we just finish our season off right, and, uh, send the seniors off right, and, and we get a win in Idaho. How much of, of a jump start do you think that – these 15 practices can give you because essentially it's it's another spring ball to be able to have that opportunity what a great blessing for you guys jumping into next year's spring ball and then into the season oh definitely the more practices you get like like i was saying earlier the more time you spend together as a unit and as an offensive unit as a team the the better you're going to be all together and you know obviously first focus is um, western michigan and and the game and um and there's tons of advantages to, to these practices. How do you think the offense is playing right now as a whole going into this bowl game? Um, we have, like I, like I was saying, it's, we've had ups and downs um, all over the place. And um, I feel like we're just learning. You know, like I was talking about the O-line is young. Every, everywhere on the team is pretty young. And, you know, the vets play vital roles and they help us all out. And uh, we're able to learn and and figure things out in play. So just the more we play together, the better we've been. I feel like we're we're getting to where we need to be, but we still got a long ways to go. I realize that it's it's not the Boise State Broncos, but I can imagine that you guys are probably looking forward to another shot at playing on that field, right? <laughs> yeah, we got to win on the Smurf turf. <laughs> so Zach was saying how he was like cut up, and it was just a brutal field to play on. Did, did you guys deal with that kind of stuff too? Um, you don't really notice it during the game. It's more after the game that you're like, man, that was that was rough. But I mean. A field's a field, and yep. football's football, so we're excited to play. All right, let's wrap things up with the final four. These are the personality questions. Okay. Okay, the last show you binge-watched was what? Oh, crap. Um, the last show I binge-watched, uh, Parks and Rec. And did you like it? Oh, it was funny. It was a really good show. It was funny. <laughs> so yeah, was that the first time you had seen it, or were you just going back and re-watching it? First time I'd seen it, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Somebody somebody uh, recommended it to me in the training room, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll give it a shot. And it provided some good laughs, so. <laughs> It's probably weird, though, now, because most people know Chris Pratt as Star-Lord. He's ripped and everything, and then you uh-huh. see him, and he's kind of a pudgy guy in Parks and Rec. It's probably a little little shock there watching him. Okay, second question. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Ooh. Oh, man. I don't know. I My favorite superhero is the Hulk, so probably just to go Hulkish, but without the crazy. The anger? Yeah. yeah. It's superhuman <laughs> strength without having to go yeah, crazy that, to do it. Yeah, that, that'd be it. Okay, so your favorite meal is what? Ooh, favorite meal. Oh, I feel like that changes. I eat a lot of food. Um, <laughs> well, you're an offensive, offensive lineman. You're supposed be to. be that way, right? I really like pasta, any kind of pasta. That's I like it. All right, last question. How has coming to BYU changed your life? Um, it's changed my life in a big way. I mean, uh, my family uh, has been here and uh, have, have all gone here, and it's been cool to be able to experience the, the BYU environment uh, in the classroom and on the field. And um, it really is a great place to be, and so it's – it, it changes your life gradually, you know, and it just it keeps going as, as you keep learning and, and growing. James, appreciate the time. Good luck against uh, the Broncos. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was Shep Talk with redshirt freshman James Impey. And, Mark, you know, we talk a lot about how young this team is and how many freshmen have been playing, and that's certainly been the case with the offensive line. And, you know, there's certainly been some ups and downs, but a player like James at, at his age – and with the number of years he has remaining, this this has been a very good season for him and that offensive line. Yeah, I, he got a – wasn't he fifth or something in the nation, something like that on his uh, rankings or ratings from game days. And so uh, he's had a great year. And I agree that uh, I, I like Coach Pugh. I really like the youth that's in that offensive line. And I think that there's uh, a lot of really good things ahead for BYU in that offensive line play. Well, and that we'll, we'll continue on with the, the freshman discussion because we'll talk with Greg Rubell in about 10 minutes. But next, Mark's going to chime in on the freshman impact in Analyze This. That's coming up next as Cougar Pregame Live rolls on on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 
Welcome back in, getting you ready for the bowl game. BYU and Western Michigan, the Cougars and the Broncos, not that Broncos team, up at Boise at Albertson Stadium. We have the game for you here on the new skin BYU Sports Network coming up in just a little while. You'll hear Greg and Mark and Mitchell on the broadcast, but now it's time for Analyze This. And each week I present our own analyst, Mark Lyons, with a topic for him to flex his skills on. And we were talking about freshmen in the previous segment. You heard from James Impey, the redshirt freshman center for the Cougars. And freshmen have really played a major role on this year's team, specifically on the offensive side, Mark. You have players like Zach Wilson, Brady Christensen, James Impey, as I mentioned, Lopini Katoa, just to name a few. What improvements have you seen from this freshman class this year, and and what do you believe the future holds for this class? Well, you know, they step up and play. That's the thing, and it's such a big jump from uh, going from high school into a a freshman that the game is so different. It was a lot of fun in high school, and you did it because the chicks liked it. And so uh, (laughs) then you come to college, and all of a sudden, it's serious stuff. And uh, you still like the competition. You still think it's, it's great to be part of the game and a team. But uh, it's a different game. It's harder. And so I am impressed that uh, those freshmen are able to do that. And it's, and it's changing, uh, Jason, because so many of these freshmen now go to different camps throughout the country. They have uh, uh, the individual coaches. They, have, uh, they, they do all of this training that uh, is related to your sport. And because of that... They're coming in better prepared physically to be able to step out on the field and play. But uh, the part that has to change still is the psychology part. You have to be able to think, I belong. And that's a hard thing for those freshmen to come up and say, I belong in this game. I'm, I'm part of this team. So the fact that they are, uh, when t- coaches are able to bring them in and make them feel accepted, players are accepting them as teammates, Man, that just makes a huge difference, and all of a sudden, they start to excel. And obviously, when you're younger, uh, you're going to get better and better as things go on. We watched that uh, from Zach Wilson. His progress of playing that first half against Utah, I thought, was his best half. He played a good game against Boise State. So the more opportunities you have of uh, playing in the game really does help you to prepare for the next game and how you're going to get better. So... Freshmen have had a big impact. Uh, They are an important part. Uh, I think BYU does something interesting in their recruiting and that they try to find. They aren't able to go out and just get those top uh, five-star recruits, but they are able to find good players that are willing to work hard and become good football players. And that's always been the way it's been. Absolutely. You know, and the culture today is that young players come in and they expect to play. They want to play right out of the gate. And that doesn't always work out. Now, sometimes players are ready from the beginning of the year to be able to go in. Sometimes they'll come in because of injuries to other players. But I I think one of the things that BYU has shown is that regardless of what class you are, if you're a, a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior, if you are the best player, you're going to see time. And I think... That's all player can ask for. I agree that uh, when you get out there and you have your opportunity, uh, boy, oh, boy, it's such a thrill. I, like I, I've told everybody forever, I remember the first time I ran on the field in order to go into a football game at BYU. And, oh, man, I mean, it's just a feeling that uh, I'm playing college football. <laughs> And it's such a great feeling. And uh, so for those guys to go out and step up and play, and then all of a sudden they become part of what's supposed to happen where you're, uh, you're contributing to those wins, man, there's just no stopping them. I think that the, there's no ceiling. And, and that comes from then working hard and harder and harder. Well, and with so many young players playing pivotal roles for this team this year, uh, next year yeah, they'll be seasoned and uh, the the opportunities for them will be even greater next year. And I think, uh, I think most BYU football fans are really excited to see what Zach Wilson does in year two and Lopini Katoa in year two. They're, the the future is very bright for BYU football. Coming up next. To make one, oh, wait, oh, go can ahead. I just make one yes, more quick ahead. statement? 
is so many teams throughout the country are into this redshirt program because you get that freshman and you get to take that learning experience and and not give up the year. And with four games that you can play, boy, that's just huge. And then still be able to receive uh, an extra four years after that because those redshirt guys. See, Boise State is one of those prime examples. Almost every one of their players that come in as freshmen are redshirts. Yeah, and I really think that's a a game changer with what college football did. To be able to have young players, to be able to have game reps, to be able to go through more than just simulation, to be able to go out on the field for up to four games and still be able to have a redshirt season, I I think that's – it certainly got a lot of publicity when it came out, but I'm not sure it even got as much as it probably should have for for what it will allow programs to be able to do with the talent they have in it. I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I think it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Coming up next, speaking of big deal, we will visit with the voice, yeah, Greg Rubel. He's kind of a big deal. He'll join us on Cougar Pregame Live as it rolls on next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Jason Shepard and Mark Lyons for more Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Coming up a little later, Mitchell Jurgens will join me. We'll get his view from the sideline. You'll also hear from Western Michigan head coach Tim Lester. But right now, it's time to visit with The Voice. Joining us now is the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. And, and Greg, I, uh, because I follow you on Twitter, you're a fantastic follow for many reasons. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I, I saw an update, and that's, that's usually where I start our visit with The Voice conversations. I know you just talked with, uh, with Kalani Satake, and there were some players that their status was up in the air. You have an update on some of those players, but you also have an update on a player that we thought was going to play, and apparently now his BYU career is over. What do you got for us? Yeah, Squally Canada was attempting to get back for the bowl game, and uh, initial indications earlier in the month of clearance were positive, but uh, will not make it back. Kalani telling you moments ago that Squally Canada is not a go today. So, take a look at BYU's top three rushers on the year. Lopini Katoa, no. Squally Canada, no. Matt Hadley, no. So, your next man up, or next men up, are Braden L. Bakri and Riley Burt. Tyler Algier and probably some Aleva Hifo running the ball as well, which he's been doing all year, we already know. Uh, and, and that's not ideal, obviously. It's quite suboptimal because on the other side, you've got two healthy running backs who've accounted for almost 2,500 rushing yards in uh, Levante Bellamy and Jamari Bogan. So advantage Broncos in a big way today running the football. So if BYU is going to get things done, it'll be in large part due to the holes the offensive line creates for guys that aren't used to carrying the load that those three guys we just mentioned did this year. So uh, the storyline coming in, Mark and Jason, is that BYU is very, very thin at running back, and Western Michigan is not. Yeah, and that's the area that BYU has to try and approach is the uh, Western Michigan side. Their defense is weaker than their offense, and so BYU wanted to be able to attack that and right now the run game could be questionable as to whether it's going to be that kind of weapon that they would like to use. And so then we go back to what you were talking about. I think the tight end is the guy that's going to have to kind of have a bigger part in today's game. And Matt Bushman had that against Utah, 10 targets, and uh, jumped up to end the season, end the regular season at least, Jason, just one catch behind Aleva Hifo. And for a while there, Matt was really lagging in terms of his catches. Yeah. Wasn't being looked to a lot, didn't have the numbers he did last year. But as the regular season ends, Hifo had 26 and Bushman had 25. And I don't know that Aleva was even targeted once in the Utah game, and, and Matt had 10, so we saw where BYU wanted to go in that game. So uh, offensively, those are the big absences for BYU, and they are huge. You're already missing Matt Hadley, but you know once once Matt Hadley went out on offense, and once Isaiah Kafusi went out on defense, yeah. things really turned in that Utah game. And neither guy's back today because Isaiah Kafusi's not going to play either. So I don't know anybody was expecting Isaiah back necessarily, but uh, no Isaiah Kafusi. <coughs> Sorry, Jason, and look for some changes uh, defensively to kind of help make up for the fact that uh, the Cougars have suffered personnel losses elsewhere, especially in the secondary, you could see and expect to see Diane Gomoloku revert back to his old corner spot today. So you could see Shelton and Gomoloku on the corners with then Warner and Lee as, as safeties. We we're, already, we're already going to see Tanner Jacobson uh, moving to one of the linebacker spots with Isaiah Kofusi out. So uh, Pulsifer, uh, Sandler, uh, Pulsifer, Sandlin, 
Jacobs and Powell are your primary uh, outside guys with Sione Takitaki handling a lot of things inside. Nate Sampson could see some inside, inside time as well today at linebacker. You know, I, I want to go back to the offensive side. Now, heading into this bowl game, I s- somewhat expected a more expanded role in the offense for Zach Wilson. It may sound crazy because he's the quarterback, but in terms of, of running the football, I kind of expected to see a little bit more of that than maybe even we have with the news that Squally's not going to be there and Lopini officially out. I, I would think that that would be even more important today, his ability to run the football. Yeah, and, and, and Zach, is, as we know, in fact, I, I, I do think, and Mark and I talked about it a bit this morning on TV, the game that, that, that Zach played here was one where he really, I, I thought, uh, uh, extended plays, made things happen. And, and even though he has had only six starts this year, he's second on the team in third in rushing, rather in third down conversions. That is him being the ball runner uh, on third down to, uh, to convert to first. And so that's a big number for someone that only started half the year. And so he, he's already taken uh, kind of that, that Taysom Hill role relative to a third down guy. I'm not saying he's Taysom Hill. I'm simply saying when it was third down, Taysom could make a play and was far and away the most effective thing BYU had going on third downs when he was here. And Zach Wilson, in a short time, has proven himself to be that third down guy. If it breaks down especially, he can make the chains move, and that's what you get with him. Well, just talking about uh, X's and O's, having Braden El Bakri be a lead blocker in the backfield, I think it uh, becomes a potential thing that they could do to assist in that run attack uh, when they do have to run the football. And here's a, something about Braden L. Bakri. Guess how many carries he has this year? Not a lot. Zero. All right? Now, <laughs> that, that number's going to change. <laughs> he will have, I, I'm, he, I'm certain he will have carries today. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if he ends up uh, right there with the, with, the, with, with the leaders in carries today. Again, no rushes on the year. He has eight catches. But, yeah, if you think about Braden L. Bakri as a run back, running back, full back, clearly, but nothing uh, toting the rock this year. But that should change today, uh, Jason, we would think, because there aren't right. too many options. Right. Uh, Tyler Algier has six rushes. Uh, Braden L. Bakri has zero rushes. Uh, Riley Burt has 46 carries, and that's somebody that's already gotten into the mix, obviously. And then Aleva is right there. Aleva's got 29 carries. Aleva has, has more carries uh, than, uh, than, than a couple of those guys who will be asked to, to occupy larger roles today. Of course, they have gone away from the fly sweep in these last few games just because uh, teams have kind of figured out that was an important part of what they're doing. And so, 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 we might see, yeah, so we might see, Mark, uh, just a little more traditional yeah. running. Out of, yeah. I, I think. Oh, well, I actually think, though, that they've been away from the fly sweep enough that the opponents maybe might not be too concerned about it. Greg, uh, one last question for you. Uh, and follow me on this one. This was more a uh, more big picture uh, question. What aspect do you believe would be helped the most with a BYU win today moving forward? The the on-the-field product or psychologically confidence-wise? Which do you think would be helped the most with a win today? I think it's the the external components. Uh, I I think the the perception of the program, where it's going, progress made, those kinds of things. Um, I think, think, again, the on-field results... um, you know, I, I don't know that, that, that much is going to happen in terms of, uh, you know, who's on the team and who comes to the team uh, based on that. But I really do think that in terms of a, a fan base and a perception and, a, and, and an ability to say we're moving forward, I think it's enhanced by just getting to 7-6 and six over 6-7. Six and seven. I think everyone will tell you that makes a 7-6 yeah. and six versus 6-7 six and seven makes a big difference. Yeah. I really do believe it's an important game today. And something Kalani talked about in our pregame interview, right near the end of it, he said he talked about the notion of not wasting a second. He believes that there have been a number of teams already in this bowl season that have wasted their seconds on the football field. He doesn't feel, feel that, that, that enough teams have been properly motivated in their bowl games, and he wants his guys to, to be different than that. He wants his team to be the motivated team. He doesn't want to be one of those teams that you know, puts up a goose egg and he said, well, they, they didn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to be that team. He said, I don't want my guys to waste a second. And so taking advantage of the 60 minutes and being the motivated and the more motivated team is, uh, is really high on Kalani's to-do list today. And we talked about it a little bit, Greg, uh, the fact that BYU is kind of a big favorite might have some impact in their psychological approach to this game as opposed to Western Michigan saying uh, we're better than what they're putting us yeah. at in this game. And so uh, that's why BYU has to meet that energy early in the game. I agree with that, Jason. I, I think BYU being a heavy favorite, uh, again, initially can play into Western Michigan's hands. BYU has to confront that and fight back against it today. All right, we'll let both of you go. Greg, thank you as always. And Mark, this is uh, 
This is the last time we're doing Cougar Pregame Live. So I, I want to say thank you so much once again for the opportunity to be able to work with you and to be your friend. And uh, thank you so much for all the help you've been on doing this show for the last couple of years. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason. You're all a pro. All right. Thank you so much. We'll let both of you go. We'll hear you coming up in just about a half an hour. Thanks, guys. Okay. After a quick break, our weekly View from the Sideline with Mitchell Jurgens. Cougar Pregame Live continues next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to your host, Jason Shepard. Welcome back into Cougar Pregame Live. Shep with you in our BYU Radio Studios in Provo, Utah. Let's head back up to Boise, Idaho, site of today's famous Idaho Potato Bowl, BYU and Western Michigan. We are joined by our sideline reporter, former Cougar receiver Mitchell Jurgens. Mitchell, thanks for uh, for joining me once again. It's it's been a while since we've talked, but I gotta say, man, it is great to have college football back. Hey, it is. It's uh, it's kind of a weird time with uh, <laughs> with football missing. You, you know, because you know it's not over, but it feels weird that it's just it's not on, especially for BYU. And so it, it does. It feels good to be back here um, at Albertson Stadium, ready for a football game. Between the two of us, you are the only one that can talk about what this is all about. So, <laughs> so tell me what bowl week is like and then what bowl games are like take me through what that's like as a player yeah so first with bowl week i mean these these weeks are so much fun uh number one every bowl week follows finals week and as a student athlete you know it's uh, and on top of you know going on a vacation with your closest friends with your wife and your kids if you have them um it's just great to get rid of that burden that came from being a student athlete going through school going through finals and and having a, a time to relax a little bit um and so that's that's awesome um and then you know it, it's 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 a fun vacation where these players get so spoiled um police escorts <laughs> are everywhere you know everywhere you go if uh, i mean it feels like if i gotta go to the bathroom i'm gonna get you know police escort and uh it's just it's just so cool um with that aspect and then the the hospitality suite is so great you've got uh, a ton of great snacks cougar tails are on the top of that list <laughs> and it's just i mean fun games and it's just a fun atmosphere so bull week is just it's so fun and so deserving for the players that have put forth so much effort um and then to the game um i mean this is the final test to prove themselves as a player and also as a team it kick starts the next season and a win here would be huge for byu um however they're not the only team with that philosophy and mindset and, you know, Western Michigan is feeling the same thing, and they're going to come out with the same intensity, wanting to carry that momentum into the next season. So these games are always intense, especially for the seasons having their final game as the bowl game. How much did you feel, because this is something that's brought up a lot during bowl season, if you're in a bowl, you get the extra practices. How much did you feel those extra practices helped you in terms of getting a jump start on the following season? Yeah, they definitely helped when I played, uh, and, and I can't imagine how much they're helping this team, you know, the BYU team, with so many young players. Uh, you know, young players, specifically freshmen, they grow so much early on in their career because this game at the Division One level uh, is so different than the competition at the high school level. So it takes a lot of practices, reps, and game time situations to get up to speed to their potential as college football players. You know, however, I would say um, they take the most and biggest strides early on in their career. So every chance they have to get a practice in against other D1 players uh, does so much for their confidence and, and transition to D1 competition. You know, we've seen this to be very evident with a young, true freshman quarterback in Zach Wilson, who has improved so much as a player week after week. You know, against Utah, I was so impressed with his progression and can't imagine what he can look like today um, so today will be huge, uh, a big indicator on what these extra practices will do for Zach Wilson and the offense and the entire team in getting a jump start on next season. Well, and I wanted to ask you about Zach. He played really well in the regular season finale at Utah. And I wanted to ask you about expectations, but it's interesting because some of those expectations may have changed literally, not necessarily for for him, because it sounds like it's probably something that the players have known for a while. But uh, we were just talking with, with Greg, and he had talked with 
Coach Satake, and uh, it was revealed that uh, Squally Canada, who we thought was going to play, uh, is not going yeah. to play. So his BYU career is over. We found out Lopini Kato officially will not play. We knew Matt Hadley wasn't going to play because of a broken bone f- uh, suffered in the Utah game. So what are your expectations now for Zach, knowing he probably will shoulder a lot more of the offensive load today? Yeah, you know, with with Squally Canada, with those backs, um, or, you know, we thought that, that Squally was going to play, you could say high expectations for this offense as a whole. But, yeah, with, with just that recent news that Squally's not going to play, um, it, it kind of puts expectations a little bit higher on Zach. Like, he's got to carry the load, just like you said. And, um, and, and so it's hard not to have high expectations for a guy that can live up to that potential and who's shown flashes of just greatness. Um, you know, number one, uh, when you look at Western Michigan's defense, um, you know, they're, they're in the top half in total defense. They came in at number 51. Um, and, and, and so even though they're in the top half, they're a good defense, I, I do have confidence that they can still move the ball, that Zach Wilson has enough experience where he can make the plays, have big-time third-down conversions, and then turn those into scoring drives. Um, you know, the last game against Utah, BYU was able to move the ball very well early on in that game, and Utah came in at number 15 in total defense. And so they can play with the big guys and and make an impact as an offensive side. Uh, and the number two, um, you know, going back to my you know previous comments about extra practice, um, I, I'm actually going to steal some words uh, that uh, Baker Mayfield said. You know, when he woke up and he said, "Hey, I'm feeling dangerous." <laughs> I feel like I feel like Zach Wilson can wake up and say the exact same thing you know you give him we, we've seen his progression from week to week and you give him you know almost a whole month to prepare for a game and watch film and 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 perfect his game i think he's you know waking up feeling dangerous and it, it, it's going to be something impressive that we see today well while byu's rushing attack is going to be without a couple of players that uh cannot be said for Western Michigan. They've got some very good backs in Bellamy and Bogan. Here's the good thing. BYU has been really good defensively against the run. So talk a little bit about that matchup, but then what other matchups do you think will be key for BYU today? Yeah, so that, that, um, you know, the rushing attack from Western Michigan versus the rush defense uh, for BYU, it's going to be a fun one to watch. You know, Bellamy and Bogan both received all-conference honors this year, with Bellamy getting first-team honors. Um, so with BYU's solid run defense, you know, I'm not sure who has the upper hand in that matchup. Um, but to a different matchup that I want to focus on uh, this week is, you know, I look at Western Michigan's freshman receiver and return special of Jaden Reed. Yep. Um, he, you know, as just a freshman, he led the team in receptions with 56, receiving yards with 797, and receiving touchdowns with 8. And he he received all conference honors as well, um, and so this guy's very talented. It'll be very interesting to see how BYU secondary matches up with him, um, it, because when I look at the last three weeks for BYU, the secondary has played excellent defense. Uh, their coverage is tighter. They're playing um, you know deep balls much better, and and so I just think at this time, you know, a freshman that's improving on the Western Michigan side versus a secondary that's improving as well, that'll be a fun matchup to watch to, today. All right, Mitchell, great stuff as always. Uh, we will let you uh, – well, by the way, what's what's the temperature like? Is it – it's still expected to be no snow, correct, but but chilly. Is correct. that right? It's it's chilly, but it's honestly not that bad. I was, I was nervous when they said BYU to the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, <laughs> and I was like, dang Blizzard it, I've got to bring my – I've got to bring my big parka. I've got to bring my jacket again, and I, I've got that, so I'll be prepared. But it's actually not as bad. The sun's shining right now, so I'm hoping that uh, – It'll stay shining for the entire game. Yeah, let's hope the sun is shining on the BYU Cougars today. Mitchell, great stuff exactly. as always this entire season. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll let you go. We'll, we'll hear you on the broadcast with Greg and Mark. Okay, thanks, Jason. You bet. Coming up on the other side, we go across the field and talk with Western Michigan head coach Tim Lester. That's next on Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to your host, Jason Shepard. Getting ready for BYU and Western Michigan. In fact, I talked with the head coach of the Western Michigan Broncos earlier in the week, Tim Lester. Here's our conversation. Coach, have you ever played or coached on a blue turf before? No, I never have. I've always been intrigued by it, you know, and it's, it's fun. It's fun looking at it and seeing it and, uh, 
you know, I've always been intrigued by with Boise State, and here's my opportunity to uh, get out here and compete on the blue turf. I know BYU has. It's a, it's a cool it's a cool thing. Yeah, BYU was there just a couple of weeks ago. What do you make of this matchup, and, and what do you think of this bowl, which, by the way, Western Michigan played in in 2014? Yeah, I have four, four guys on our team that were here uh, for that bowl, and they, they rave about it from the people that run it to the town, uh, how much support it gets, and uh, – so it's been it's been a blast. Everyone's excited and, and had a blast. And then obviously we get to play a great team, you know. And uh, so it's going to be a great challenge for us. And it's 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 weird when you play a team that there is crossover film. And we played a team that played them, which is unique in bowl games sometimes. And and because we we know one of the teams they played. And so yeah, it's going to be a fun challenge for us. And uh, and a, against a great, well coached team. I'll get your thoughts uh, specifically on BYU coming up, but I want to focus on your team. And when I look at your squad, I cannot help but notice the play of your running backs, Bellamy and Bogan. What great weapons to have, especially for a true freshman quarterback to rely on. Yeah, and those two, they, they make it so much easier. You know, our offensive line does a great job with those running backs, but they really do. They can take a little bit of pressure off of him, you know, and, and they're, they're different types of runners. I mean, obviously Bellamy is a 4-3 type speed guy and, and Bogues is, uh, you know, is big and thick and, and comes downhill and gets the, the tight yardage runs. And when we need, when we need one or two, he can always get it. And, and so it's been, it's taken a lot of pressure off the young quarterback. I mean, look at the other side They're They're going through the same things we are as far as trying to grow a quarterback and develop a quarterback and get them calmer. And, uh, you know, this will be game five for Caleb. And so it's, uh, it's about calling a better game. I'm getting to know him better. He's calming down and, and we're able to get back to uh, a little bit more uh, balance as he gets more comfortable as an offense. It is uh, somewhat ironic. Both of these true freshman quarterbacks took over the programs roughly at the same point in the season. Now, obviously for different reasons, but you were talking about Caleb and, and his progress. When you look at him, what really stands out to you about his skill set? His arm, and you, and you mean everyone's going to see it, and every, anyone that sees him throw live, it, it is a different, he's got a cannon. You know, and we're working on his feet, and, and he's getting smarter with where he's going with it. But as far as flat out making any throw on the field from his touch on his deep ball to a comeback to the field that, you know, I played 44 college football games and I can't make half the throws that he can. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so he, he, he has a special arm, you know, and we got to teach him when to use it. I mean, I've had a lot of guys that like that. Doesn't mean they're going to be good quarterbacks, it just means they have a special gift growing out of their, their, their torso. And uh, and so he he is special the way he throws the ball. We got to just get him to the right places, and and he can do the rest. It's the it's the learning part that all all eighteen year olds struggle with. Talking with Coach Lester, the man in charge of Western Michigan here on Cougar Pregame Live. Talk to me about your defense. What kind of defense will this BYU offense be facing? You know, we we, we got to play. We we've made a change uh, just just two weeks ago, uh, or between, with a week left in the season at our defensive coordinator spot, and we you know we weren't getting the production out of them that that we needed and then they came out there against northern last week and they played extremely aggressive you know we we were young at corner we had two seat we two nfl corners drafted last year uh we only had really three starters coming back on defense and they've they've been getting better as the year went on they had their best game last game so i'm hoping they can build off that momentum of what they did against northern and uh, they're going to need to. They're going to, you know, they, we got to move around and, and, and try to puncture the line of scrimmage against a huge offensive line and a team that runs inside zone and pin and pull really well. And and uh, obviously, you know, they can throw the ball down the field aggressively well. And so, so it's going to be a challenge for them, but I, I really feel like their last game was their best game and they're really coming into form and, and they'll have another challenge for sure in this one. It's becoming more and more common for guys to go back to their alma mater and coach, and both you and Kalani are coaching where you went to school. What has that meant to you? You know, it's, it's, the, it's the biggest blessing and biggest curse of all time, <laughs> and this is why. The blessing is that you love where you're at. Every time you turn the corner, I mean, wearing this logo uh, on your chest means so much more, you know, because of what it means to you and the blood, sweat, and tears and, and – uh, you know, and then the other side of it is you care so much. You know, when things don't go, when you lose a game, you know, it's, it, it, it just kills you, you know, because yeah. you, 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 you're, so, you're so invested. And, and you know, the, the people always talk about the noise and, and, like, the crowds, and they get behind you. And I know half the people, and I know all the alumni, and they're friends of mine. Some were in my wedding. And, and so you really want to win for them. Um, you always want to win for the alumni everywhere, but when you know them and you know their families, it's, it's a whole new level, you know? Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting every day to get up and, and walk through these hallways and, 
and the same ones that I walked through. You've touched a little bit uh, during our conversation on pieces of this BYU team. What are your overall thoughts on the type of program that you're facing? I think they play a physical brand of football. I'm really impressed with their defense. I mean, I think, I mean, they're big up front and they're long and they do a great job stopping the run, watching them play Boise. I mean, they, they had Boise beat. They had their offense guts in the whole time. And, and I've just I've been very impressed with, and you know, I compare them to Northern a lot because I think Northern has a special defense, you know, and you had a chance to yep. see that. And I think BYU is the same way. And uh, offensively, they've got a young quarterback. They're if you get them into rhythm, they can score as many points. But they, you know, it's hard with an 18 year old to get into a great rhythm, you know. And so, um, so that they're very similar that way. Is, is offensively, they have all the tools. They're growing their quarterback. Uh, every play he's in there, he gets a little bit better. And, you know, obviously we got to keep them off balance and, and, and uh, you got to find a way to move the ball against a defense that statistically over a whole year, you know, given up, I think, 20 or 19 points a game, you yeah. know, which is very difficult to do because it's not like this is one or two games set. This is a whole season. They've done this against a great, in a great schedule. And uh, so it's going to be a great challenge for our offense. With this being the bowl game and having a full season behind you, where do you think your team's made the biggest inroads? Where's the biggest improvement from, say, week one to now the bowl game, you think? You know, I think the biggest thing is, I mean, obviously, if you go from last game, our defense had made the biggest improvement, you know, and then, and it really from last year, this year, it's our passing game, you know. I think uh, our receivers have really, from two years ago, when we had that great season with Corey Davis, we lost all our receivers, and last year we had a bunch of sophomore receivers that had a decent year. Uh, this year we've thrown for 400 a couple of times. Like when teams have done a great job of stopping the run, our offensive passing game is efficient, in which it wasn't efficient in the past. Uh, so it, you're you're a more dynamic team to beat because you got to be able to do both. You can't just rely on one in in major college football. You got to if, if team wants to stop the run and makes you throw it, you got to be able to you know beat man to man coverage. We got an exciting true freshman in Jaden Reed that's had a phenomenal year, and and but all our all our skilled players, I think, have really stepped up to give us more dynamic other than just counting on our running backs for everything. So I've been I've been proud we've been able to score points as our defense is getting better and better. We've been able to score with people uh, because we have a, kind of a two-pronged attack now, which we didn't have in the past. Coach, I really appreciated the conversation. Really enjoyed it. I'm, uh, I'm excited for you to be able to go and experience the blue turf, to see the Smurf turf with your own eyes. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Jason. All right, that was the head coach of the Broncos, Tim Lester. Back to wrap things up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. All right, that's a wrap for Cougar Pregame Live. Coming up next is the Zions Bank Cougar Pregame Coaches Show with Greg Rubel and Kalani Satake. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Time to get head coach Kalani Sataki's thoughts on today's game. It's the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show, presented by Zions Bank. We haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. Let's join Mark Lyons and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good afternoon, Cougar football fans. Welcome inside Albertson Stadium in Boise, Idaho, where today the BYU Cougars make their 36th postseason appearance in their 17th different bowl game. After a one-year absence from postseason play, BYU back in the bowl business, this time in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl against Western Michigan. The Cougars back at Albertson Stadium only seven weeks since their last visit here, but instead of facing the Broncos in blue, it'll be the Broncos in brown. My name is Greg Rubel. I'll have today's play-by-play call, joined one final time by the former Cougar signal caller, the last BYU quarterback to beat Western Michigan, The man who today completes a memorable 38-year broadcasting career, the Arvada Flash, the legendary, one and only Mark Lyons. And, uh, Mark, we do our final game together just the way we wanted. In the postseason, a chance for BYU to finish the year with a winning record and a chance for you to make your final call a winning call. Well, we are at a bowl game. Yeah, that's great, you know, and I'm glad that we get that, uh, quote, one more time uh, together that uh, we get to call a game. It's uh, such a fun gig, Greg. Uh, It'll be hard to give up. But while we approach this at the as the end of the season, the team needs to approach this as an important step to make for improvement. That's what I think this bowl game's all about is to try and get better. The winning record's an important point to sell everybody about the positive step taken to improvement. The season was close to being a big turnaround from last season. Anyway, wins over Arizona and Wisconsin early, but how quickly we forget. You know, uh, a few close losses along the way unrailed that early success. But here we are at the end of a long and wonderful trail. 
that's crisscrossed across the country many a time. The location of this game could be anywhere. It doesn't matter where it is. This is an interesting thing for me here to be at Boise, though, Greg. As you were kind of uh, talking to me yesterday, I looked it up a little bit. In my 38 years of broadcasting, this is the only venue in which BYU has played at in more than one game that BYU has not won. And so, today is the day. Right here in Boise. This is it. Tonight's the night. And so it ends here in Boise, Greg, my boy. What a great day for a football game. All right, coming up after the break, it's our final pregame conversation for this year with head coach Kalani Sitake. We'll find out who's available to play after a month away and get his thoughts on facing Western Michigan as the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show continues live from Albertson's Stadium in Boise on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to hear from the coach of the Cougars. The Cougar pregame coaches show continues. Here once again is the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Coming to you live from Albertson Stadium in Boise, where this afternoon the 6-6 six and six BYU Cougars take on the 7-5 and five Western Michigan Broncos. BYU looking for its first ever win in this venue. As Mark noted, Cougars 0-5 all-time on the blue turf when taking on Boise State. We'll see today how the Cougs fare against a different set of Broncos in BYU's first meeting against Western Michigan since 1970. BYU's been off since the gut punch loss to Utah in the Cougars' regular season finale. And BYU did more than just lose a game. It lost a number of key players who will not be available to play today. At the same time, the hope was that some banged-up players would get back today. So in our pregame interview with BYU head coach Kalani Sitake, brought to you by Zions Bank, we haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. The coach brings us up to speed on his personnel projection, starting with running back. Squally will not be playing, and neither will Lopini. We, we were hoping that uh, Lopini would be able to play, but um, today just doesn't look uh, good warming up, and, and it's not 100%. Uh, he had practiced up until this moment, and even yesterday got a little bit of work, but um, it's just not feeling right. And he's, If he's not 100% or even in a position where we can keep him healthy, then we're not going to play him. And Squally never got back, huh? Squally never. He came back for a couple of days and just never could get back afterwards. And his health is more important right now for us, and we're focusing on that. So you'll see a mixture of, of Braden Obakri, Tyler Algier, Riley Burt, and um, a little bit of Aleva Hifo as well. Okay. So that's your backfield. Uh, you know that your quarterback's set, though, and he's had experience on this field just a month ago. Yeah, and I feel comfortable with his backup, too. So I, I, uh, you know, we'll have guys out there. And, and uh, the good thing is, we've although... There's some that aren't going to be participating to today. We're, we have a lot of time to get the other guys queued up and ready to roll. So I, I feel really confident with how they prepped, and uh, I just got to put, put it to work. Unfortunately, two of your top defenders can't go today. We already know that Corbin Kafusi was going to be done after mm-hmm. Utah, and Isaiah didn't make it back. Yeah, unfortunately, Isaiah wasn't going to be back, and he's still hobbled up. And so um, in his place, you'll have uh, Adam Pulsifer and Rhett Sandlin um, rotating in with them. But we did get Riggs Powell back, um, and he and Tanner Jacobson will be playing the flash position with Sione at the mic. So Tanner's a pretty versatile player for you. Oh, yeah, and and uh, he can do a lot of different things at nickel, safety, and linebacker, obviously now, and, and also playing um, a little bit of uh, just our hybrid flash nickel position. We used to see Diane at corner. We may see him again there today. Yeah, we felt like with uh, some of the youth in the, in the corner position, we're going to start Diane at corner with Mike Shelton, and uh, the other guys will kind of rotate there. That leaves Troy and, and Troy Warner and Austin Lee starting at safety for us, and we feel comfortable with their experience, and also with guys like Malik Moore rotating in with them and also um, Sawyer Powell. So what's your confidence level, generally speaking, with everybody kind of uh, you know either filling in for somebody or playing a new spot, that kind of thing? Well, it may be news to some of the fans of what the move that we made, but Diane Gonwuluk, who's been playing corner all of last year and then pretty much the, all of the 15 practices that we've had for this game. And so he'll be fine there. Um, it's more of our confident level and being the best 11 on the field at one moment. And um, we'll have, I mean, we have a couple th- third-string guys that are still got a lot of practice, but hopefully we don't get to them today, you know. Uh, but they should be ready if, if their number is called like in the Utah game. But um, it's, a, it's a different game. It's a physical game, so anything can happen. But uh, I'm just really proud of hard, how hard the guys worked and how prepared they were, balancing uh, their academics and you know the, the bowl festivities and then being ready for this game. And in the last 15 practices, it's been really, really nice to see everybody be ready for this game. All right. Western Michigan uh, gives uh, us two freshman quarterbacks starting today. They've got a kid named Caleb Ellaby. Uh, what do you like of him and, uh, and this team in general, especially on offense for them first? 
We're, we're expecting to see Caleb on, on the field, and, and I think he's kind of the guy that's been um, deemed the, the starter for what we see and, and where we think they're going to go forward. And they have a lot of skill at the receiver's position, a big physical line, so we're going to have to match the physicality, and, and um, that's something that we have to really earn is the line of scrimmage. And whether it's controlling the run game or the pass game, we have to win the line of scrimmage today. Two really nice backs, though, that will challenge you. Oh, yeah, and they can rotate them, and they've got tons of numbers and a lot of carries, and so... Uh, it's a good, it's a good balanced attack, and they can put up a lot of points. And uh, the good thing is we've seen that a lot this year, and, and we've had some some success with it. But we've also struggled through some things. And, uh, we should have everything lined up, and if they make some great plays, great. But we got to make it hard for them. Pretty standard four uh, three. They've had a few teams really get loose on them and score a lot of points, but they made a late season defensive coordinator change mm-hmm. and played a good game in their last game against NIU. Yeah, and, and with that, they they create some havoc, and, and uh, so and there's still a little bit. Um, Still a little bit unknown because we don't know much about the coordinator other than he's a D-line coach and, and what his tendencies will be, and it's hard to get it off of one game. So we have to be prepared for everything. And um, the, the thing to re- really get prepped for is more pressure. So I think we can handle the, the base stuff, and but I think we're just dreaming up some pressures and just throwing it out there and having our guys handle it all. And um, we're going to have to uh, be sound in our blocking um at the line of scrimmage and, and not let guys free on our on our players. So I think if you uh, give Zach some time, he'll make he'll make you um, pay for it with with being some accurate throws. But if he's having to scramble a lot, around a lot, then it's going to be problems. So, um, but I, I feel confident in our the way our guys prepared for it. And still with the unknown, I think they they've uh, prepared for the worst, and that's that's the right thing to do. We had 15 practices to do it. What's always been your personal feel about opportunities that bowl games present? Well, I think for us it's a lot of work, you know. So you you have to work really hard because you play hard the entire time. I mean, you're you're doing a lot of fun things. You, the, our players that are married have their wives that are here and their kids, those that have children, and so um, the, it's nice to have them with them. And and whether it's going tubing or whatever it is, doing service projects, there's a, there's stuff to keep them busy. But um, uh, it's a lot of work. When we get on the field, and we do our film study. Uh, it's not one of those things where it's not a vacation. The vacation comes after this game, so. Um, although we, we try to have some fun and let the guys be around their family, I think the goal from the entire time and getting these 15 practices was to win this game. And so uh, that uh, that's the mindset. They're going to have a lot of time until January 7th to, to rest, and the seniors will have longer to get ready for the combine. So um, I feel confident in it, and we're, we're ready to go. Finally, how big a difference could one game, one win make to this perception of this season? Well, I mean, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on us doing that. I just think that... Uh, because then you just negate what what Western Michigan is going to do. I think we respect them, but we have to play our, our type of football game. Um, and when we do that, we're really tough to beat. And so I think if we can do that, be consistent, and not waste a second on the on the clock. I think for us, our guys care a lot, and they have worked really hard. And so uh, it's time to empty the tank again. All right. Good luck in this one. We'll talk to you afterward. All right. Go Cougs. That is BYU head coach Kalani Sitake. Title and escrow can be complicated. With over 50 years' experience in Utah, Provo Land Title has the expertise to navigate your buying, selling, or building project. Provo Land Title, making the complicated easier. Our preview of BYU and Western Michigan continues after this. We are live from Boise and the famous Idaho Potato Bowl on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Corner, you're tuned to the Cougar Kickoff Show. The Cougar Kickoff Show is brought to you by... Utah Community Credit Union. Get more house. Same payment at UCCU. It's what we do. BYU Dining. The classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Utah Honda Dealers. And by Mountain America Credit Union. Guiding you forward. Let's head live to the Bryant Heating and Cooling Comfort broadcast booth and join Mark Lyons and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good afternoon again, Cougar fans. Welcome back inside Albertson Stadium in Boise for the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, pitting BYU and Western Michigan for the sixth time all-time, but the first time in 48 years. I'm Greg Grubel with Mark Lyons calling his final BYU football game. Our on-site engineer is Barry Squires. Our statistician is Ralph Sokolowski. Our spotter is McKay Perry. Our pregame, halftime, and postgame studio host is Jason Shepard. Down on the field, former BYU wide receiver Mitchell Jurgens. Mitch reporting from the Zions Bank end zone. Zions Bank, we haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. The rest of our broadcast crew featuring BYU radio engineer Sean Fay, Coordinating producer Terry South. Control board operator Nathan Israelson. 
along with broadcast intern Blake McMullen here in Boise and intern Lindsey Peterson back at the BYU Radio Studios. You are coming to us, and we are coming to you on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Well, uh, coming off a 4-9 and nine season and missing out on the postseason altogether last year, getting back to a bowl game at 6-6 six and six shows progress from 2017. As positive a step as BYU's taken to get back to the postseason, 6-6 six and six feels like it could have been better, right? You win at Wisconsin, kind of show how good you can be, but close losses to Cal and NIU and Boise State and Utah. The end result is a 500 campaign that will either end with a winning or losing record based solely on today's result. Mark, to that end, what happens today here is uh, well, pretty important. I agree that uh, you really do have to prepare to win every football game. Absolutely, Greg. First, people need to know that BYU goes to bowl games and then wins those bowl games. So you need to win, play to win every game. And here's one more chance now for BYU to show some improvement. A win helps to put a positive attitude in the players' heads to prepare for spring football. But I do think that even related to that, I think there's more positive possibilities that you gain from playing in this bowl game and winning the bowl game than there are negative. It helps erase that memory of that uh, Utah loss. It builds enough strength in your team to win those close games for next year. I think there's an awful lot that you gain from playing in a bowl game. It's a one-game season. You come here for just this one shot. You have to be prepared at the start of the football game to get ready for that. You get a trophy if you win this thing. (laughs) And so that trophy is your, you know, you've gone and conquered and you've taken home the gold. More of the Cougar Kickoff Show coming up after this break, live from Albertson Stadium in Boise on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Getting you ready for BYU football. A fake fly sweep. To the end zone. It's a touchdown. You're listening to BYU football on BYU Radio. Middle and right into the end zone for the touchdown. Lowers his helmet. Drives those pads past the plane. Twenty first, 1968, it was BYU's season opener at Western Michigan. And the Cougars starting quarterback that day was Mark Mountain Lions. <laughs> as BYU won the game 17-7. to Cougs took a 17-0 lead in the game. The first score, touchdown pass. Mark Lyons to Kip Jackson, and the route was on. <laughs> uh, you say route and just, of course. <laughs> uh, but it was a good start uh, to uh, win the opener. You know, the second game that I played in in my career was also against Western Michigan, but it was in uh, so it was in Provo. And that and, was a real route. Uh, yeah, no, that was a route. You know, that was a good game, 44-19. Western Michigan comes to Boise with a lot of skills. You know, uh, the more I watch them, the more I am impressed. BYU's defense will be challenged today, especially with a lot of their injured football, those defensive players. But BYU has to be ready to play and have some enthusiasm and execute like they did in the first half of the Utah game. Western Michigan's given up 400 points to their opponents this year. BYU needs to put points on the board and stay with it all game. The thing I'm really impressed about is how Western Michigan stays in games and they fight to the finish. Now, seven opponents have scored first against them this year, and uh, these guys just don't quit. They outscored six opponents this year in the second half. Mm -hmm. So when you look at their scoring in the third and fourth quarters, Western Michigan scores 117 points in both the third and the fourth quarters. And they allow their opponents in the fourth quarter. They've only allowed 55 points in the fourth quarter. So more than two to one there in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and so uh, I think that uh, you've got to be able to play the finish because these guys really do a solid job in the second half. Time now for You Be the Judge, brought to you by Legally Mine. Legally Mine equals asset protection. Go to LegallyMineUSA.com to learn what you can do to stop lawsuits dead in their tracks. Here's today's BYU football trivia question. In BYU football history, only nine quarterbacks ended their Cougar careers with 20 or more passing touchdowns and eight or more rushing touchdowns. Here are eight of those nine. Ty Detmer, Jim McMahon, Steve Young, Taysom Hill, John Beck, Gary Scheide, Virgil Carter, and Brandon Doman, who is the ninth player. The answer coming up next as the Cougar kickoff show continues from the famous Idaho Potato Bowl at Albertson Stadium in Boise on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 
getting you geared up for game time. This is the Cougar Kickoff Show. Now back to Mark Lyons and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU and Western Michigan kicking it off just after the top of the hour. Let's get you the answer in today's BYU football trivia question in You Be the Judge, brought to you by Legally Mine, and here it is. In BYU football history, only nine quarterbacks have ended their Cougar careers with 20 or more passing touchdowns and eight or more rushing touchdowns. Here are eight of those nine players. Ty Detmer, Jim McMahon, Steve Young, Taysom Hill, John Beck, Gary Scheide, Virgil Carter, and Brandon Doman. Who is the ninth player? Those are a lot of good players. Yeah. So to be in that company, you've got to be a good player yourself. Yeah, who would that be? It was you. (laughs) No, no, it wasn't. It was you. (laughs) Mark Lyons completes that illustrious group. You be the judge, presented by Legally Mine. He was a player. Well, today's bowl game is the rare contest that will feature a two freshman quarterbacks, Zach Wilson for BYU, Caleb Ellaby for Western Michigan. The distinction is that while Ellaby was an injury replacement for a prolific starter, uh, Wilson was a tactical replacement as BYU wanted to shake things up. Now, through six starts, Wilson's results solid, if not spectacular, but ultimately very promising. Eight touchdowns, three picks, completion percentage, low 60s, pass efficiency around 140, bunch of big plays on the ground, two rushing scores. He's tied for second in third down conversions on the ground in only a half season of work. And Mark against Utah, Wilson was kind of the reason I felt that BYU got out to that 20 nothing lead. Coaches put the ball in his hands, essentially, and said go to work. Then came the pick six that really changed everything. Okay, he throws the INT, and all of a sudden Utah's in the game, and it got, I think everyone kind of got gun shy a little bit. BYU called run plays on every play in the ensuing series. They called run plays on 10 of the next 14 plays overall. They called a run play on third and nine early in the fourth quarter. Wilson, I thought, lost his moxie, and Utah won the game. Mark, that Utah loss will sting for a while. And maybe it serves as a good reminder that you kind of kind of let this kid play his game a little bit because he's got a lot of game. Well, I do think that uh, he is going to be a really good football player. And I think that the first half against Utah was his best performance so far this year. The total turnaround in the second half, though, I think that was tough to watch. It was complete reversal in performances of those two teams. I don't think the run for first downs is a illogical approach. I think that they were just trying to run for first downs and try and kill the clock and running was the safest way to do that. I do agree that it was conservative but they couldn't, they just didn't make first downs. It's just surprising to see the numbers in those two halves. BYU is 11 for 16 throwing the football for 137 yards in the first half. In the second half they weren't that bad. 9 of 13 but only 67 yards only making 7 yards on a completion. BYU ran the football 27 times in the first half for 110 yards and ran the ball 20 times in the second half for only 43 yards. They just weren't productive. Utah, on the other hand, they were horrible in that first half. 6 of 12 throwing for 49 yards. They were 13 for 16 in the second half for 92 yards. Still not great. But the rush game was 12 carries in the first half is all they got. They just didn't get, they ran 24 plays in the first half, 12 carries for 37 yards, and 25 carries in the second half for 118 yards. They more than doubled their carries, and also they they tripled their production in their rush game. So the turnaround happened because of the change in the performance of those two teams I do agree that they got conservative, but they expected to be able to still be able to run the football well enough to first downs, keep the ball away from Utah, run out the clock. Utah scored 35 points in the second half. Coming up, we'll hear from sideline reporter Mitchell Juergens as our look ahead to BYU and Western Michigan continues at the famous Idaho Potato Bowl on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 2018 BYU football season, and the last time Cougar fans will get to hear from Mark Lyons in the broadcast booth as BYU meets up with Western Michigan in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. BYU's 36th bowl appearance and 34th in the last 41 years. Only six schools have more bowl bids in the last 41 years. Ohio State, Florida State, Michigan, Georgia, Alabama, and Nebraska. Not bad company. No, BYU's not in a New Year's Six game. The Cougars don't play for a conference championship, and they're not ranked. They didn't end up in a warm bowl destination (laughs) against a high-profile P5, and no, BYU's not at full strength. Injuries have sapped this team at a lot of spots. But, Mark, it is a game day. It's game day. And for the final time in 2018, 
BYU's on, on ESPN, playing as a respected favorite. Cougs about a month to get as right as they can be. Their head coach going for his 20th career win, and with it would take a winning record into his fourth season. BYU as a team would secure a winning record after a 4-9 campaign last year. They've got an exciting young quarterback at the helm. They've got an O-line being built for the future. Yeah. They've got young, promising corners. They've got a bunch of seniors suiting up for one last go-round. There should be no shortage of motivation to come on out and try and make the biggest statement you can make to end this year. Isn't that the truth, Greg? That's it right there. You just said it. That's what I'm looking for. This team has been up and down all season in relationship to their motivation, and they've got to get this together today, get this group together and pull together and may play a complete game, you know, because that's, that's what's going to take to make a, a victory today. But talking about this is the final game for many of those seniors. You know, we have senior day, and we do the, the blanket but today is the last day that these guys are going to step on the field for many of those seniors. And I just love this quote from Money Ball, and I've used it before, but uh, hang with me. It's talking to me, too. <laughs> We're all told at some point in time that we can no longer play the children's game. We just don't. We don't know when it's going to come. Some of us are told it's at 18. Some of us are told it's at 40, but we're all told. And so all of those guys someday are going to have to finish this game. And uh, today, for many of them, will be their last shot. And as Kalani said in the pregame, don't waste a second. Don't waste a second of your 60 minutes you've got out there today. And by the way, I mentioned the promising quarterback, at freshman, uh, the freshman quarterback, Zach Wilson. BYU's freshman quarterbacking record for pass efficiency is 137.95. Ty Detmer set that back in 1988. Zach Wilson is above that right now at 139.22. So that's how good a start he's off to with the BYU Cougars. Time now to bring in Mitchell Jurgens from the Zions Bank end zone. Zions Bank, we haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. And Mitch, your last game at BYU, it was a bowl game in the rain in San Diego back in 2016. And it was a win over a team in brown and gold from Wyoming. Here you are today, back at a bowl game. BYU facing another brown and gold team from Western Michigan. What are your final game memories, and uh, what do you hope BYU gets done here this afternoon in Boise? Yeah, Greg, sunny San Diego was not sunny San Diego at the <laughs> at the Poinsettia Bowl in 2016. And you know, to get this, it's beautiful weather here in Idaho. The sun's well, it just kind of dipped behind some clouds, but it's been poking through, and you know, you just the weather's kind of like sports, is you can't predict it. Anything can happen when it comes to game time, and uh, yeah, so I'm excited to be back for a bowl game. Uh, going to my last game, you know, I had great memories there. It was very wet. Jamal Williams had an amazing game against Wyoming, which was fun to be a part of, and Kai Nakua came up with the classic Kai interception to seal the game for a victory, so it was such a fun experience. And, and for tonight, my expectation and hopes for this BYU team, you know, to put it simply, I just hope they come away with a victory. Um, you know, win can mean so many things for all players involved. You know, seniors want to end their career with the win, and returning players want the momentum to carry over to next season. You know, and to top it off, they need to win on this turf. It's been too long. Yeah. Actually, it's never happened. Um, and so it would be great to see a win here in Boise for the BYU Cougars. Mitch, thanks. Good stuff. Coin toss, kickoff are coming up. This has been the Cougar Kickoff Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.